Yep, I'm with you now. Uh, 263 is what Australia have managed and what is another riveting, compelling, attritional, pick your word to describe that day of test cricket, the first of the second test at uh, the Arun Jaitley Stadium. We will uh, look back at that and pick up first observations of Australia's response to being beaten so comprehensively in Nagpur on ESPN Rigan for match day with Wasim Jaffer and Ian Chappell. Let me go to Chappelle first up. Uh, it's certainly an improvement with bat, is it a marked improvement for you, Chapelli? And how do you sum up that batting effort from Australia? Well, I think the important thing about uh, today's batting was that they did learn things from Nagpur. Um, there was a bit more calmness about the batting and there was also, they were a bit more choosy about when they attacked. Uh, there were a couple of times when I thought the pitch looked pretty dead and the Australian uh, partnerships uh, look solid and it looked as though Australia could get up towards 300, maybe even more. But then India, when they struck, they seemed to pick up a couple of wickets and then there'd be a break and then a couple of wickets. So India did well mm -hmm. in striking a couple of times because Australia, to me, I, I think there was uh, early... In, in the game with Hanscom and uh, uh, Kawaja together, they look very comfortable. And then later on, um, uh, Hanscom and Cummins look very comfortable. And I thought to myself, this pitch isn't playing too many tricks. Uh, a, a decent score could be on the cards. Um, so I, I thought the batting, they definitely learnt from Nagpur. Hmm. Uh, Wasim, hearing what Chapelli has just said about the surface and knowing what you know of what is this relayed surface uh, at the former Kotla and now the Arun Jaitley Stadium, 2-6-3, is that a decent score? There were times when Kwaja and Hanscom batted where it looked pretty easy, but India still managed to get wickets in groups. Uh, I would say, Ranak, uh, India would be a happier team. Uh, you know, Australia probably batting first, they would have been looking at, at a score close to 350. Uh, 260 is not going to be a winning score unless India bundles out very quickly uh, tomorrow. Uh, but if India get past that score or takes a decent lead, then, then Australia is going to be under pressure. So I feel they are still 70, 80 runs short. Uh, you know, they would have wanted 350 uh, because that's the best time to bat. And if you don't score, uh, you know, pretty big score in the first inning, uh, in the second day, it's going to get even harder uh, with that pitch going low and low. And the fast bowlers will come into play and obviously the ball spinning, so spinners will do their job. And, and the fast facing the fast bowling, I feel, will be even more difficult. Mm, all right. It's, it's one of those first inning scores, 263, that we'll better judge once we've seen how India respond to it. There were a couple that went ankle height to KL Rahul on the first day, just towards the end of the day from Nathan Lyon. So we reserve judgment on the surface, perhaps, till we see India bat more. But let's talk about Australia's effort with the bat. Uh, let's start with the two prominent innings. First, Usman Kwaja Chapelli. Uh, what was different today about Kwaja from what we saw at Nagpur? What made, what made things work for him? Well, you, you know, you can't really bring Nagpur into it with Kawaja. He was out uh, cheaply and early in both innings. Um, but uh, I thought he was quite proactive. He used the reverse sweep um, uh, to effect. Uh, and I think he frightened the Indians a little bit. I, you know, it's it's hard to tell as a captain who, who captained well before the bats became bigger. Uh, and so you understand that captaincy is a bit harder now because of the size of the bats. But I still think that you've got to keep fielders in place to take catches rather than reacting to some of the shots. I thought there were times when mm. India reacted to the shots, i.e. The, the sweep shots, and place field for those rather than keeping guys in catching positions. I, I don't think... You know, there's the odd person who can reverse sweep really well, um, but not many. And I think if you keep fielders in catching positions, i.e. Uh, 45 backward square leg and backward point, uh, have them as catching men. And I think uh, sooner or later, somebody who reverse sweeps or sweeps, if you get the ball to bounce a little bit, you're going to catch the top edge and that's where the ball goes. But... Uh, to his credit, Kawaja, uh, I think, um, uh, pushed the field back and he was then able to take advantage. 
Henscombe has always had a reputation for being a good player of spin bowling. Um, here again, he, he did play spin bowling well, but look at his chart where the bulk of his runs were scored on the offside. Uh, if you know that as a fielding team, you've got to try and make batsmen do something that they don't really want to do. And in uh, Hanscom's case, that score a lot of runs on the onside. He much prefers scoring on the offside. And I think that India, um, having seen him a bit now, they've got to try and cut down on the number of runs he gets through the uh, offside. But I think the important thing for Australia was a couple of their main players were much more proactive uh, than they were uh, previously. Yeah, yeah, I think fair enough. We've got more... Yeah, absolutely. I just we just lost Trapelli at the end a little bit, but I could I could get most of the gist of that point. And it's a point. It's a conversation we've had many times for home tests. Wasim, haven't we? About the school of captaincy that is applied by captains. We've seen it under Virat Kohli. We're seeing it under Rohit Sharma. Even MS Tony. They react to boundaries pretty early. Even Ashwin, if the ball is turning in the first session of a test match, is still happy to have long off. Is happy to have deep point in today's case for Kwaja to try and protect. Boundaries. Uh, conversation seems to be that it's okay to get the batter off strike so long as you don't concede 40 50 too quickly in what clearly looks like test matches that you know could be 250, 270, that sort of scores. Where do you stand on that? Today, India did, uh, like Ian Chapel points out, give Kwaja boundary riders a bit early in their innings. I mean, the modern captains uh, do that. I mean, even the modern batsmen, I feel, Ronak, uh, you know, they play a lot more shots compared to in our time or even Chapelli's time. Uh, you know, they're not scared to uh, reverse sweep or sweep or even going down the uh, ground. So that's the reason why uh, as soon as the spinners come, uh, you see the long off, you see the long on, you see the deep mid weekend because they're happy to give them one uh, because the modern batters, uh, you know, they want to score quick. Uh, and they, the captains don't want them to, you know, run away with the game. Uh, so they're happy to give uh, singles, uh, you know, in spite of, you know, they're not hitting boundaries. They're happy with that. Uh, and that's the reason why you see, you know, they drag the game. And, and even if the partnership is longer, they're happy uh, to not concede too many runs because they know uh, if they get one wicket, they're going to get two, three, uh, you know, in succession like today. Uh, they, they had... Manas and, and Steve Smith in, in succession, then uh, Travis said, sorry, uh, uh, I think it was somebody else, Carey and, and uh, Travis said probably, or even in um, Cummins and uh, the other guy, Murphy. So, you know, you, they understand that, you know, when the partnership is happening and somebody is willing to play shots, they're happy to, you know, happy to give them one and, and wait for that opportunity. Uh, and the batters uh, play a lot more shots nowadays. They're not scared. I mean, Players like Rohit Sharma or even Shreya Shahir, they, even when you have long off and long off, uh, you have seen them. You know, he's still going for the big sixes. Uh, so you know, the modern day batters' thinking is a lot different to you know in our time or even uh, Chapelle's time. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's if if you are to be judged by your results, then it certainly worked for these Indian captains who've gone who've resorted to this method early in a Test match. Uh, but a decisive blow was perhaps dealt in that double strike over when Ashwin got Labushin and Smith, arguably Australia's best batters. Uh, and we'd probably talk about the impact of that as this test gets deeper. But it's a it's a marked improvement on how Ashwin seems to have Steve Smith's number, Chapelli. Up until the last series in Australia, Steve Smith had that record completely to his name. Ashwin had him three times in 570 balls across 14 innings uh, with 348 runs. Since that 2021 series, Ashwin's got him four times out of eight, giving away just 71 runs. Something seems to have uh, changed that that matchup, if we can call it that, where Ashwin fancies Steve Smith. I wonder what you made of, of how Ashwin bowled to Steve Smith and that double strike with Labushin. I, I think it's absolute rubbish that uh, captains uh, get carried away with the left-hand and right-hand batsmen and who bowls to them. I mean... Forget all of that. Ashwin is just a damn good bowler, and he's going to get right-hand bats for now, as he showed. He got Lava Shane and he got Smith in the same over, both right-hand batsmen. No problem with them. Why the hell wasn't um, Ashwin bowling uh, later in the in the innings when Australia started to have trouble with Cummins? Who Cummins can bat a bit and he can hit a bit. Okay, he hit a couple of sixes off uh, Ashwin, 
But certainly later in the innings, when you had Nathan Lyon and Kuhneman and Todd Murphy there, I thought uh, I thought Ashwin should have been bowling way ahead of Axar. But I, I just got the feeling that the captain was, you know, he was besotted with this left hand and right hand combination and uh, Ashwin bowls well to left handers and somebody else bowls well to right handers. Absolute rubbish in my book. I, I just think Ashwin mm. is a very fine bowler. He can get any batsman out, left or right hand, and I, I'd have him, you know, I think Chardaja is a much improved bowler, but I'd still say that Ashwin is the best bowler, yep. best spin bowler in the Indian side. Mm, yeah, if, uh, Wasim, from what you saw of those two wickets, it looked like two balls that pitched more or less in the same space. One turned and got Labush and LBW, and the other one just went on and uh, Bharat took a good catch to dismiss Steve Smith. Could you take me through how Ashwin managed those wickets? Well, I think just the still of, of Ashwin, isn't it, uh, Rana? You know, uh, the first delivery uh, of Labushen, you know, perfect off spin, turning, uh, you know, with that loop and then coming in, dismissed him uh, leg before and the other one just going straight. Uh, and then when you're bowling round the stump, it creates that, uh, you know, a different angle where you need to play because most of the deliveries are going to pitch in the line and probably hitting in the line. So you want to avoid getting LBW. Uh, when you bowl over the stump, sometimes, uh, you know, that impact can be outside of some, so you can get away. Uh, but bowling around the stump create that doubt. Uh, and that's where I think, uh, you know, it was class of, of Ashwin, uh, you know, we, we could see him bowling, uh, the first one turning really nicely and hit him in the pad and the other one just staying straight. Uh, so I thought uh, he really well disguised a couple of deliveries to get two quality batters out. Yeah, I mean, all the focus on India's spinners, given what happened in the last game, but we perhaps sometimes underestimate the impact of the seamers. Mohamed Shami today, Wasim, if I could come to you first. Wickets with the new ball getting uh, David Warner, uh, getting Travis Head straight after lunch, so striking at key points and then cleaning up the tail. Mohamed Shami's vastly improved. Or actually, he's never been bad at home in Test cricket in India, hasn't he? The spinners take the headlights, but... Uh, the, but as far as Mohamed Shami goes, he's such a vital part of India's success at home. He has been. And, and most of the bowlers, Bumrah, Shami uh, and even Siraj lately, uh, you know, the Indian pace bowlers on, on Indian conditions are far too good. Uh, uh, even in the second inning, Shami has been brilliant. Uh, and like I've said, when the pitch is little up and down uh, on a black soil, which is kidding on, not, not too much bounce, uh, the fast bowlers are pretty difficult uh, to face. And then again, uh, you know, he's creating trouble uh, to David Warner again, getting him out, coming around the stump. David Warner has that that problem. Uh, he's had a lot of problems with Stuart Broad bowling around the stump. And and again, uh, he's got out in the similar fashion. And and you could see David Warner's uh, approach, uh, you know, where is Usman Khoja, which Chapelli has talked about. You know, even though he had a couple of failures in the Nagpur, he came out with that aggressive mindset. Uh, you know, you couldn't make out that... Uh, you know, this guy had failed in a couple of innings in Nagpur. He batted in that same fashion. Whereas you could see David Warner, you know, much more defensive. 21 balls to get off the strike, get the first run. Uh, not the old uh, David Warner we could see. And that's that's what we wanted. David Warner to play, you know, be the old David Warner. Uh, and he's had, he's had his troubles, bowlers bowling around the stumps. So I thought Shami has been spot on, you know, uh, taking wickets with the new ball. Uh, Siraj did that last time as well. Uh, Mohammad Shami did that, uh, and and it's a handy, uh, you know, for the fast bowlers, for the Rohit Sharma to have two quality bowlers operating like that. And Shami has been brilliant, like you said. The Indian fast bowlers have been brilliant on Indian pitches. Yeah, really good ball to get David Warner as well from Mohammad Shami Chipelli. Would you read too much into Warner's innings today? Well, the one, the one thing I'd say in favour of David Warner is at least he's been good enough to nick him. And um, he, he's, he's gone through quite a patch of nicking balls that other players are playing and missing. Happened to him in England uh, and it's happening again to him here in uh, India. He nicked that one today when a lot of other batsmen were playing and missing. But I, I think, you know, the point you're making about the Indian fast bowling that could be an area where Australia um, uh, are a bit um, uh, regret some of the selections. Only having the one fast bowler and having to open with the spinner. Sure, Kuhneman bowled okay, but not having that other seamer 
um, to back up uh, Cummins, I think they'll regret that. And the other thing, the other point I'd make about comparing Ashwin and Lyon, um, look at the balls that Ashwin bowled that, that either curved away or pitched off stump a little bit outside off stump. And with uh, Labashani, got the LBW ball coming back from outside off stump. Smith, the ball that went straight on just outside off stump. Have a look, even tonight, just in a couple of overs, have a look at how the Indian batsmen were playing Lyon on the onside. It happens far too often. I think that the Lyon, uh, the, the line that Ashwin bowled is a far better line than the one that uh, Nathan Lyon bowls. Does that surprise you to a degree, Chipelli, given his vast experience, he's had success in India before, something just off the radar for Nathan Lyon? I, uh, it, to me, it's always been a problem for Lyon. You, you've got to, far too many runs are scored by right-hand batsmen on the onside from the bowling of Nathan Lyon. That, when you see that, that tells me that the, the guy is bowling too straight at the stumps. I think it's something that uh, Todd Murphy did in the last test. But he's a bit quicker and a bit flatter. He bowled to contain the batsman, and then the batsmen were getting themselves out quite a bit. But to me, Lyon, as a bowler who flights the ball a bit, he gets some bounce, but you've got to get that curve away. To me, the ideal way to get batsmen out, particularly in India, is to curve away, spin back. Now, if you do that, as Ashwin did twice in that one over, you, you open up the, the edge behind the wicket, either keeper or first slip. Uh, obviously, you can come through the gate and bowl the batsman. You can get him LBW, as he did with Labashain, but it also opens up the bat pad. If you're going to bowl round the wicket as an off spinner and you're going to bowl at leg stump, for I, as a right-hand batsman, you'd be pretty cranky with yourself if you got out bat pad. So I, I think... But Lyon's problem has been, unlike Ashwin, he doesn't seem capable of curving the ball away from the right hand and then spinning it back. Right, interesting to see if we see a more successful Nathan Lyon in this test match. A quick word on Matt Kuhneman from you, Vasim. Chipelli's pointed out it's only the four overs, but we've had a first look at him. First time Australia using the left arm spinner in this series. Took the new ball as well. Will he be asking some questions? He did. Beat the bad or force a nick or two of Rohit Sharma towards the end of the day? I think he looked impressive, uh, even though he bowled only a few overs. Uh, but but he bowled with good pace and he bowled good lines. Uh, and the wicket will assist him. Uh, and any right-handers facing a left-arm spinner uh, is going to ask the question. And the way he's bowling, uh, you know, it's going to be important day how India deals with Kunaman. Uh, even though, you know, Nathan Lyon and Todd Murphy will, will be a challenge as well. But I think Kunaman uh, will keep them in the game. Hmm. Not a lot of spinners from Australia in any era, Chapelli, that would have bowled their first ball in Test cricket with the new ball? No, it's not something that you see a lot. And, and I really do feel that um, that could be a mistake in the end, not having another quickie there to help uh, uh, Cummins, particularly on that track. I thought that pitch in Delhi uh, helped the quickies a bit. There was a bit of movement around for both Shami yes. and Suraj. Um, I, I thought that Cummins uh, troubled the batsman a bit with that new ball. And I think if you'd have had another quickie at the other end, um, he could have troubled the batsman as well. So, And the other thing is, it, it's interesting to see how bowlers bowl early in their spell. And bear in mind that India only had a few overs to bat tonight and therefore they're going to be a bit cautious. But they'll play a little bit more, a little bit differently uh, later on. And what I want to see is how's the bowler bowling, you know, when he's bowling his 15th, his 20th over, his 25th over. That's when you have to keep bowling well. The other thing I'd say about India, it seemed to me that they used the small roller, which is a complete waste of time. You might as well walk up and down on the pitch. You'll just do exactly the same thing. You either use the heavy roller, which... I, and I'm told this by groundsmen, so it's not something I'm sprouting. That's I, I did the first time as captain. I said to the curator, uh, give me the small roller. He said, mate, if I walk up and down on the pitch, I'll do just as much good. You can have it if you want it, but it won't do you any good. He said, I'm telling you, 
have the big roller. It doesn't break the pitch up and it'll just calm things down. You might get a half an hour of calmness out of the heavy roller. So I think that's something that India should start with uh, day two. Mm. Wasim, anything you want to add on that, knowing our conditions as well? The, for the novices, the difference between using a, a heavy roller and a light roller on these sort of surfaces, which are turning from day one? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, the captains are apprehensive because when, uh, you know, that's the perception that if, if they use the heavy roller, you make more damage to the pitch. Uh, that's the reason why, you know, the teams or the captains in the first inning, they don't opt for that. They'll probably opt for that in the second inning. So, so the other team, you know, feel that uh, the pitch will break up. Uh, so it does make sense, uh, you know, when you have the heavy roller, uh, the pitch settle downs for a bit. And that's what India wants. Uh, India doesn't want to lose early wicket at the you know first half an hour or hour. It, it, it will make sense because India would want to bat, you know, once and probably bat big. Uh, you know, if they get 50, 70, 100 run lead like they did in Nagpur, uh, then it will be game over. So... You know, thinking in that sense, uh, they won't mind taking a heavy roller tomorrow morning. Mm, all right. You think so much rides on which team is ahead after the first innings with bat for both sides. So let's pick up the chat tomorrow. Thank you very much to Ian Chappell as also to Wasim Jaffer. More from them as this test match goes on. Join us at the end of day two on ESPN Cricket for match day.